Microphone's muted. You're doing a great job. Um, right here on the bottom bar, you'll see details. You'll see an attendance form and a feedback form. If you haven't been on any of these um, this week, welcome. The attendance form is just really for me right now. Um, we'll see what we can do with that in the future. And then feedback at the end. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not offering up a ton of knowledge except for just what the um, premium subscription does for you or what the additional benefits are to some of these programs that you maybe already use, okay? Um, <clears throat> webinar questions under attachments. This is an open to everybody file that if you have a question and it's not related to this or you don't want to ask it, um, go ahead and fill that out. And then this extensions, apps, and websites, I'm going to kind of use that as my, as my guideline for running this webinar, okay? So uh, feel free to click that open. You should have access to that. Um, I'll try to moderate the chat if I can, but I got a couple people in here who can help me moderate the chat. If So if somebody answers you, it's most likely because they're helping moderate chat or they just know. All right. So, um, hey, uh, Michael Scott giving you free stuff, right? So that's great. So uh, before I get started on the big list of things I want to share out, I just want to show you the uh, Southwestern City School website. So maybe you've... Haven't been on here in a while, but now there's a coronavirus right on the front page. This isn't even the in-house part. This is just right on the front page. And you can find a ton of information for families, um, for um, for kids, for Infinite Campus, for food, for whatever you may, whatever people may be asking you, you can probably find information on here. This is being populated constantly and updated constantly. So I, I imagine it will look different uh, even tomorrow. There'll probably be some more buttons because it just keeps happening. Uh, in the in staff only part, uh, for staff only part in the in-house uh, right here, uh, our curriculum team, our communications team, our tech team, uh, basically every team at the district office has been working special ed team to create resources and compile them and curate them. So you have uh, a basis to go off of if you're if you need it. Okay, um, this one is probably the one of the best ones because uh, I, I I've said this all week, but all of us are used to going to an office and having a bell schedule or having classes and specials and and now that's gone and um, it's going to be weird. So this could be really helpful. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the website, um, and we're just going to jump into the tools. Okay, so I'm just going to run down this list, and then when I'm done, I'm done. And if you have questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and throw it out there. I'm not an expert on every single one of these tools. It's not like I've used them extensively. Um, I was a high school math teacher last school year, but now uh, I don't have students. So some of these tools, the everything changes every year with, with these technology companies. So um, you know, I, I might not know the exact answer, but if you ask it on one of these tools, chances are somebody's in the chat and does know it. All right, my first one, Screencastify. Um, if you don't use Screencastify, I would absolutely add this extension right here. Um, just click on that and click Add. You'll get the little extension to show up on your Chrome toolbar. Um, and then if you want the premium, let's just go through how that works. You just click on the link right here. All right, um, for you. If you haven't already done this, you'll see a little place to put in a coupon code, and you'll put in the code from the sheet, cast underscore COVID, and then, and then you'll be able to get it for free, right? And it says, I think it's like April 17th or something, um, but Screencastify was one of the first companies to offer the premium to people who are affected by the shutdown, so I'm guessing um, that might get extended. Um, if you're wondering what Screencastify is or why you should care, it's it, it, it records your screen. It also will record a little video of you in the corner. So if you're wondering how people have always done that, um, Screencastify is a really easy way to do that. Uh, with the premium version, you have unlimited video length. So normally it's five minutes, but now you have unlimited. And then you also get the drawing tools. So if I'm like recording my desktop, and I can use the drawing tools and draw on top of what I'm talking about, which is really great. I would encourage you, if you're using um, any type of video with students, that you keep the part where you're in the video, right? Keep the camera on, the webcam on, so they can see your face. Um, 
I, I made videos for my students. I used to not keep that part on because I didn't want to see myself, but I saw them every day, right? And now I don't see them every day face to face. I would absolutely keep that personalized part. If you're looking for something to just make videos of yourself, like maybe you are reading or maybe you have a whiteboard behind you and you're trying to do something, uh, Screencastify works great for that as well. Um, you just hit the webcam only option and then you can just create uh, basically a video of you doing whatever. Um, it, it's also great for students. So if students have Screencastify, they can click the webcam only and hit record and then they can make a video of themselves as well. Um, I understand some some students might struggle with that, um, but maybe that's a great teaching opportunity for you. So that's Screencastify. Thank you, Christina. It is case sensitive. The cast underscore COVID. All right. There's other screencasting things out there, but this one's premium. It works really well. It's just an extension, so we'll go with that one. Okay, I'll share one other one later. Uh, Cami, so Cami actually upgraded all of our teachers to teacher their teacher plan. Um, the the extension doesn't do a ton for you, so let me show you what that does. Uh, I'm gonna pop that over here. The extension, when I click on it, opens up the website. <laughs> okay, so it's not like you need the extension, um, but if you use it a lot, it's really helpful. Um, and you can open things from your drive. And then you can annotate on top of them. Uh, let me show you a couple of the premium features in case you have used Cami, but you weren't sure there are other features out there that you would want. Uh, let me find something here that I can write on top of. I'll just do it on this. Okay, so this is uh, just a random thing I have in my Google Drive. The old math Harvard exam from back in like the 1700s or something, I don't know. All right, so some of the things that are in the Cami, Cami teacher version are text-to-speech. So if you hate typing, you can use text-to-speech. Um, and then these comments are really helpful too. So if I want to, I can click a little dot here and make a video comment to somebody. So then when they view this Cami uh, document, they can see my comment, which is pretty cool. And then the other one's a screen capture. Um, it will capture me doing exactly what I could have done with Screencastify, right? But maybe I love Cami. Okay, some of the other premium features, equations, a premium feature, and then these down here, but you can type in equations really easily. And then if you're teaching with Cami, um, one thing that is limiting is you can only write within the PDF. So if I'm drawing all over top of this, right, I can't go outside of the PDF, which is kind of frustrating because what if I use the whole space, right? But with the teacher version, I can just click and get a blank page at the bottom. And in doing so, I have more room to work. All right, and then it just adds on to, hey, 228 people using Cami. Uh, it just adds on to the bottom of my PDF I already had, and I can write on there. All right, so kind of cool. So there's Cami. Teacher version ends at the end of June. So we should be good. We should be able to make it through with that. Uh, edge Elastic, so there's nothing to do to get the Edge Elastic features. They've just upgraded all of them. Um, they haven't done a ton. They've given out some classes and then a kiosk mode if you're worried about locking down the browser for an assessment or something like that uh, in timed assessments. That's kind of your, your things that they're adding in Edge Elastic. Edge Elastic is a great way to just get content out to kids. It syncs with Google Classroom. I loved using it. It has an unbelievable question bank and we have some amazing teachers um, in the district who are absolute geniuses with Edge Elastic and great experts. So um, if it's a tool that you've dived, dope, I can never remember what word it is. If you've gone into Edge Elastic and haven't been satisfied, you know, I, reach out and we can probably connect you with somebody who can show you it if you're interested. Uh, GimKit, GimKit's a gamifying kind of idea. Kids love it. Everybody tells me kids love it. They love it more than Kahoot. They love it more than Quizzes, more than Quizlet Live. They love it, right? They love GimKit. So GimKit is supporting educators by uh, just giving you some more options for kits, right? So you're doubling your kit limit. All you have to do is when you get into GimKit, there's gonna be a little button here. You just click it, 
and hit OK, and it doubles the amount of kits you're able to have. All right, so that's really it. Um, but if you use GimKit and you use the free version, that at least helps you out a little bit. All right, so that's that's that for GimKit. Uh, if you're wondering what it is or why I would care, um, think Kahoot, think Quizzes, think Quizlet Live, but there are um, upgrades and different rewards and bonuses kids can use to spend their their money on when they get questions right. So if a kid gets a question right, he can buy a multiplier and then he gets more money per question or she gets more money per question. Um, there's a lot of different things that they can do. They can buy skins uh, for their uh, background and things like that. So GimKit was created by a high school student who wanted to play a fun game in class. And that the kid who runs, Josh, the guy who runs it, I don't, he couldn't be older than 20. So it's pretty cool. So another one out there. Uh, Kahoot. Kahoot just upgraded everybody to the premium version. If you're a teacher, you get free access to um, the premium version. So uh, you click on this link right here. I think you have to fill out something. But the reason why I wanted to share Kahoot is because they have this self-paced mode. So if you wanted to create a Kahoot for kids to be able to play a fun game, right, just give them something, a nice, a nice activity. Uh, and then you could also have the work that you've collected as well, right? Because they filled out the answers for it. But it says right here, teachers can access over 40 million ready to play games. So it's not like you have to create anything. You can just search and find what you want. Okay. So if you've used Kahoot's another one where I used it a few years ago and um, I wasn't super impressed because my kids, it was just chaos in the room, right? But the, the self paced mode is pretty cool. All right. So. I, I filled out something for Kahoot, so I think everybody has the premium version. I apologize. If if it doesn't work and you don't have the premium version, let me know, and I'll make sure I make it right. Okay. Uh, Edpuzzle is an upgrade link to it. So uh, right here, you just click on this link, and it will send you to the upgrade screen. It didn't send me to the upgrade screen because I already upgraded, right? Um, but I filled that out uh, as well, and it just gives you more videos. Real bare bones about Edpuzzle. If you're if you've heard of it or you're wondering, you take a video, YouTube video or something you've already created, and you put in tags or comments or questions into the video. So when kids watch it, they'll be prompted with a question about the content in the video, or make sure they're paying attention, or you can ask a formative assessment type question. You can also turn on no skipping in the in the Edpuzzle so the kids can't skip through. So. Another tool that a lot of people are using for remote learning, distance learning, whatever we call it, right? So Loom, I, I'm guessing less people have heard of Loom than probably all the other ones so far. Loom is another screen recording tool. It's another extension. So I have it right up here. All right. So it works very similar to Screencastify. I'll tell you, <laughs> it's so big. <laughs> I hate that. I don't love looking at myself, but hey, that's the world we live in right now, right? Uh, so the reason why some people will be excited about Loom is the screen recording of yourself is a, or the webcam recording is a circle and not a rectangle. As crazy as that may seem to some of you, some people will be real jazzed about that. And then I can also move this anywhere on the screen. So if I'm trying to do something and then I'm trying to make myself big so then I can like talk to my students and be like, hey, so that's what we're gonna do. Let me show you some more information and then I can make it small again and put myself in the corner and then I can show them more work. Maybe I'm working on a document or showing them something uh, behind there, right? But I like the fact that I can make this really big and put myself in the middle so then they can look at me and focus on me. That's kind of fun. All right, that's enough. Uh, another thing about Loom is you can password protect your videos on Loom. So if you don't want everybody to see them, you can do that. So that's Loom. Um, they decided, so in their press release, uh, just to give you a little background on why I included it, they decided that because of coronavirus, they were going to offer the premium v version of their tool for teachers free forever. Like it's not a temporary thing. Like they just, in response to this, they realized teachers need free tools out there. They'll charge businesses forever, but they're going to offer it for free forever for teachers. So that's kind of cool um, that they are doing that. Newzella, um, there's a link right here. Click on Newzella. I love Newzella, and a lot of us 
Um, there's a lot of people in the district who have been using Nuzel a lot this year, but they are giving away, oh my gosh, Settlers of Catan. They're not giving away Settlers of Catan. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, sorry, I had no idea that was going to pop up. They are giving away uh, English language arts, science, and social studies topics for you to share with your kids. So if you want um, leveled, age-appropriate content that are articles, either you know, either from a like the New York Times or from some publication, or if you want like actual research-based things, um, it's really easy to assign kids uh, articles in Newzilla and it also levels it for them. So again, I'm not in the business of teaching all these tools right now. Uh, I'm just trying to show you what is available with the premium version. All right, if you've never used Newzilla before and you're one of these three areas, uh, maybe reach out to somebody in your department or um, in your building who might have used it because I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have. Okay. Good deal. I can't believe that Settlers of Catan was on the front there. That was so awesome. Love that game. Uh, Quizlet's giving the teacher version for free. I'm, I'm not a big Quizlet user, so I'm actually not even going to talk about Quizlet more than it's flashcards and there's Quizlet Live. That's really all I know. Quizlet teacher, though. So um, if you're a Quizlet user, you can get Quizlet teacher through June 30th. So maybe you knew that, maybe you didn't know that, but uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm honestly not in any place to be the Quizlet expert right now. If you want me to be, I can research it this weekend, but... Um, just, just letting you know it's out there. Uh, this is one that I think some people know about and then some people maybe sleep on a little bit, but Google Applied Digital Skills. Uh, this one's always free, so, but maybe not used because we want to teach, you know, customized lessons or things that aren't pre-created, but um, Applied Digital Skills has some amazing lessons for kids, and it's really easy because it's built into Google to assign them through your Google Classroom, okay? So um, let me show you real quick. When I hit, when I sign in here, I have a couple classes, but let me just show you some lessons, all right? So I can choose um, the audience I want to pick. So let's say I have, you know, I'm with third graders, and then uh, I can pick any of these different lessons and some of them are really short some of them are like a single lesson right like organizing which might be really helpful for kids actually right now that might actually be an awesome thing to share with kids um, and then some of them are like units right plan and promote an event like that's it's up to nine hours right so that's really long and you can share this straight to Google Classroom which is helpful um, they have different tools so if you want to use a specific tool in Google these are all Google based tools and then they also have it broken down by topic right so if you're um, interested in science, you can see uh, what they have for that. And a lot of these are using the tools in Google to get stronger in the Google tool itself, um, but there's also some content woven in a little bit. So pretty cool. If I click on one of these and I hit start, it will just start a video and then it will, it will give them work to do um, through the slides. So as I click next and I go through the slides, it will, it will help me um, work through this lesson, whatever it may be. So another option for you. And then Flipgrid is always free, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach Flipgrid from the rooftops. I, w I, I, I wish it wasn't a Microsoft product. Nothing against Microsoft. I just wish Google bought it before Microsoft did. But um, Flipgrid's amazing. If you've never used Flipgrid, Essentially, just think of it as a way to post something and get a bunch of video responses from students, but all inside of one platform, right? So if I go and I look, um, these are these are called my grids, but if I think of it as these are my courses, right, or my groups of students, okay? So if I go into CIF Bootcamp, um, then I can assign topics, and I think of topics as being like assignments, right? So I can add a topic. I can give them like a GIF to look at. I can give them a video. I can I can assign them a document to read and give me feedback. I can I can just say, hey, I know you've been working on this. What do you think? What what questions do you have? How's it going so far? Um, I, I can do a lot of different things to kind of prompt the kids, and then um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna actually go in and view this because it's uh, Southwestern employees, and I don't want somebody to be like, why am I on your webinar, right? So I'm not gonna do that. 
to them, but it's really easy to share. Um, you can just share the link with kids or you can connect with Google Classroom. And then let me show you real quick under edit topic. Um, if I go down here, I really like this student to student replies option. So if I'm trying to create some type of discussion with kids, I can let them reply to videos with a video. All right, so it's kind of cool. Uh, one other thing about Flipgrid that I think a lot of people use Flipgrid a ton, uh, but maybe don't ever click on the shorts. <laughs> I'm stupid. I can't believe that's the picture I took. Um, you can record just a video using all of Flipgrid's video editing tools, okay? So they've got sticky notes you can put in a video. Um, you can add in a bunch of different stickers and you know you can add in like a hat on yourself, some glasses, all right? So I can add those in, put those over my face. Great, uh, I can add in text here. Um, I can actually use this as a whiteboard or a blackboard and just, um, just talk, right? So I can just say like, and this is what we do next, whatever. If I wanted to explain something here, or if I didn't want somebody to see my face, right? Okay, so there's a lot of different tools here. You can you can put in a, a sticker as well. So you just record, you have up to three minutes, and then you can just save this uh, file. Let me show you what that means. So if you already have one made, you can just share it to Classroom, or you can download the actual file, or you can copy it and share the link with them. And it's just a video, a quick video, so if you like Flipgrid and you're comfortable with it, maybe this is how you make check-in videos with your kiddos. I could see myself using this with my students if I was still in the classroom. And I knew it would be short. I mean, that's it. That's all I've got. So I'm going to check the chat. Um, if anybody has other questions. Uh, Loom or Screencastify better? Need to pick one to go with. I would pick Screencastify, Amber. Um, I I love Screencastify. I like Loom, but I love Screencastify. Some people just want to be different, so they're going to use you know whatever tool is not as popular. Um, I would say Loom's not as popular, but Screencastify is awesome. Is Scholastic a user-friendly tool from Laura? I have no idea, Laura. I'm sorry. I don't know if anybody else can speak on Scholastic, but I have no clue. Oh, Rachel, the link for Edpuzzle says we have to change to Westland High School. Let me look into that Edpuzzle link. I thought I had it saved for the district and not just for Westland. So let me look into that, Rachel. Cool. So uh, my, my, my takeaway for this one, I know it's not super informative. Hopefully there's a tool out there that you wanted to use and, and I at least got you going in the right direction for it. But don't feel like, oh, now I need to go use 20 different tools, right? That's not what I'm trying to get across at all. I just wanted to share what was out there. This is kind of the end of the week for me in terms of webinars, and I just wanted a nice, easy bow to tie, and that was what I thought would be easy for us to do. Uh, again, there's lists and lists and lists of hundreds and hundreds of things out there for you to upgrade, but I, I wanted to go with some that I felt like people already use in the district or people would be comfortable with, so that's what I, that's what I chose. All right, I am going to stop the recording, but I'll hang on here if um, if you have questions. Oh, and I'll keep sharing my screen.